Okay, so let's see where you stand on this question. All right, pretty dominantly on all of the above. That's what I was kind of hoping that you would see there is that this, this O2 molecule is, is flying through space so it has kinetic energy of motion. Translational kinetic energy is what you would call it. It's also changing its orientation so it has rotational kinetic energy. It's also vibrating back and forth so it has what you could call vibrational kinetic energy. And you know something about vibrational kinetic energy. Anytime you have kinetic energy changing because of a bond, you have potential energy changing because of a bond. So all of the above. They're all there. We are going to uh, add up, we're going to count the number of kinetic energies. So atoms live in a three-dimensional, so here's one of the helium atoms. Atoms live in a three-dimensional world. If you see an atom, one of those helium atoms moving fast this way, does that mean, does that tell you anything about whether it's moving fast that way? Or this way? Or up or down? If you look at ones that are moving fast to the right, does that tell you anything about how they're moving up and down? Or forward and backward? And the answer I hope is no. Those three dimensions are completely independent of each other. The kinetic energy back and forth can be completely different than the kinetic energy up and down or the kinetic energy back and, uh, you know, forward and backward. And so there are, because these atoms live in a three-dimensional world, every atom has three possible independent kinetic energies. So We'll look at that O2 molecule in a second, but let me just uh, finish this. How many kinetic energies for each atom? Three, because they live in a three-dimensional world. How many atoms in an O2 molecule? <coughs> Two. So how many kinetic energies for an O2 molecule? There's two atoms and each of them has three. Six. Don't need a calculator for that one. Six kinetic energies somehow for that O2 molecule. It turns out we can break up those kinetic energies in a way that makes sense when you're just looking at it visually. We can break it up into translational kinetic energies of the O2 molecule. So just the O2 molecule moving through the three-dimensional space. How many of those are we going to have? I mean, there's going to be six Ke terms total, but how many of them for an O2 molecule are the O2 molecule moving through space? How many of those kinetic energies for the whole molecule moving through space? Three of them. That molecule lives in a three-dimensional world. It can be flying this way or this way or that way or some combination. That molecule flies around through space. So there, so you can break this up and say, oh, there's three ways that the whole molecule can fly around through space. Three independent speeds that the molecule can have through space. What else can the molecule do? Well, we talked about it, rotations. How many ways can it rotate? Well, I can pick a vertical axis and I can say it can rotate like that. Or I can pick an axis like this straight at you, a horizontal one, and say it rotates like this. So that's at least two. And what about the last axis, this one? So it rotates like that. I'll give you a hint. What, kind, what does that kind of a rotation look like? Just looks like the rotation of one atom. Do we have rotations for one atom? No, we don't. Not at the temperatures we live at. So how many rotational kinetic energies for a, a linear molecule, one that you can look down the axis, like any diatomic molecule is linear. CO2 turns out to be linear. Is H2O linear? Nope. So linear molecules 
two rotational kinetic energies because it can rotate around this axis or that axis but not the third axis. Two rotational kinetic energies, three translational kinetic energies, that's only five, so there's got to be something else. What should we call it? Vibrational kinetic energy. These two things can vibrate back and forth. Once I've gotten to five, I know what to call the last one. I know I have to call it vibrational kinetic energy. It's the only thing left. One vibrational kinetic energy. Any other energy terms? There's no other kinetic energy terms. Is there anything about translational energy, kinetic energy, or rotational kinetic energy, or vibrational kinetic energy that tells you there ought to be another energy term? Once there's vibrational kinetic energy, there's vibrational potential energy. If I have one vibrational kinetic energy, I have one vibrational potential energy. For every vibrational kinetic energy, there's a vibrational potential energy. I can add up these energy terms and I find out there's seven of them. Well, why am I doing all this counting? The reason I'm doing all this counting is that you can prove that energy, thermal energy, is distributed equally into all the energy terms on average. Equipartition means equal partitioning. Whatever energy, thermal energy you put in is equally distributed. The thermal energy is equally distributed through into all the energy terms. If you have twice as many energy terms then at, at the same temperature then you'll have twice the energy. Sorry, twice the thermal energy. The important thing here is, or an important thing, is the size of the amount of energy that's in each in each of the energy terms. And it depends on the temperature and it depends on K sub B is Boltzmann's constant. So one half times Boltzmann constant times the temperature tells you how much energy, that's a measure of energy. It's the energy of, on average, it's the rotational kinetic, it's what, it's, there are two rotational kinetic energies they, for this molecule. One of them is rotating one way and one's rotating another way. So the total rotational kinetic energy, since there's two terms, is twice this one half. The total rotational kinetic energy on average of this molecule is K Boltzmann times the temperature. The average translational kinetic energy of one of these molecules, this helium right here, Helium only has the three translational kinetic energies. So the translational kinetic energy of one of these helium atoms, well there's three translational kinetic energies and every single one of those three has energy one half times K Boltzmann times the temperature. So this is the size of one of those energy terms and the thermal energy is the size of one times the total number of them. Yeah. Did you say that there is elastic energy in that system? Because it's kind of Any time there's something bound, then the kinetic energy of vibration, any time you call something vibrational, you're talking about elastic energies. 